Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 3rd of May and a pretty quick update this week. As always, we have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. Just one video this week, I dived into FinOps, the merging of financial information and DevOps practices. So really the focus here was, what is it at a high level and what are some of the things I can do to embrace and take advantage of it in my Azure environment? So it's about half an hour and goes through those key items. On to what's new on the compute side. So Azure Dedicated Host now has a redeploy option in preview. So remember, Azure Dedicated Host, I buy the entire capacity of a node that supports a certain type of VM SKU then I can populate it with different sized VMs of that matching SKU. Well, sometimes there are challenges. Maybe there's been some user configuration, maybe there's some underlying host infrastructure issue that's causing a host problem. So what Redeploy lets me do is it will move to a new host of the same SKU type, move my VMs to that matching hardware, with just a few clicks for me as the user to hopefully resolve the issue. Azure Container Registry has some new limits. Now remember, Azure Registry is not just for storing Docker images. I can also store related things like Helm charts, uh, OCI images, OCI specification artifacts. So now it supports up to 40 tebibytes, uh, up from 20 tebibytes, and that's for all of the different tiers. And geo-replication is supported for that premium tier up to that 40 terabytes, so over the 20 terabytes, and it's 10x the performance. Azure Spring Apps has a number of updates. Now remember, Azure Spring Apps is built on but abstracts away AKS to provide a fully managed Spring Boot Apps environment. It now supports Azure Savings Plan, so that one or three year plan that you purchase that you don't have to specify regions or zones or types of compute. Azure Spring Apps now applies to that. And if you select the three year Azure Savings Plan, I think you get up to 47% discount on that. The Azure CLI now supports the streaming for the Spring Cloud Gateway. Now remember the Spring Cloud Gateway enables a whole bunch of features like single sign-on, access control, resiliency, rate controls, a number of architectural patterns so I can get the logs in real time that's really useful for diagnostics purposes. And I can also use the Azure CLI to now retrieve the application configuration service logs. That's more the management of the Kubernetes native config map resources that typically integrates with some Git repo, which makes it easy to detect if there's been configuration changes. There's also some overall enhancements around troubleshooting the application configuration service. On the networking side, so Azure Virtual Network Manager, which we think of as that centralized, very scalable management of connectivity between VNets, but also those security admin rules that run before NSGs apply at the subnet or the NIC, well now they've added support for user-defined routing management. So I can centrally define a collection of routing rules that look just like regular UDR rules, and now apply it to collections of subnets, virtual networks. So if I now think about large scale routing requirements, maybe I need all internet bound traffic to go via this network appliance, all private traffic to go via this network appliance, maybe uh, spokes, this is how you go and talk to the hub. I can now drive, define those and push them out using Azure Virtual Network Manager in preview. On the database side, so HD Insight on AKS. So this is shifting from running it on virtual machines to running it in containers on the Azure Kubernetes service. This is, I think, the, the go for direction. So it lets me run those open source analytics workloads on containers without having to worry about management of the containers themselves. So Apache Spark, Apache Flink, Trino, and I get all of the flexibility that AKS has in terms of the types of scalability it has in terms of different SKUs it can utilize. It uses OAuth-based security instead of Kerberos, which is now available in seven new regions. And also just the regular HD Insight is now available in Mexico Central. On the miscellaneous, 
So Azure Monitor Network Topology Experience has been updated. So with Network Watcher and Network Insights, you get this topology view. It enables me to interact with the resources, view their relationship to each other, and it includes the information gathered from Network Watcher Connection Manager, from Traffic Analytics. It works across subscriptions, across regions. I can select the scopes I care about. Well, now it improved just this overall improved experience for viewing, for zooming in, seeing all of those details. Azure Monitor Pipelines is in preview. So think of this as enabling this very high volume ingestion from edge environments. So for example, your on-premises. It's like extract, transform, load, but for monitoring data. And there's two components to the pipeline. At the edge, we have an edge pipeline, and in the cloud, we have a cloud pipeline. So the edge pipeline runs at your edge, it collects and even caches the data if required, then it sends it to the cloud pipeline, and the cloud pipeline is where maybe it's transformed and then ingested into Azure Monitor. So if I had, for example, an Arc-enabled Kubernetes, I would run this here. I could use it with IoT resources and really other types of log source. Chaos Studio now supports resource tagging. So remember, Chaos Studio, I have experiments, and those experiments drive the certain types of failures I want to introduce, and there's a certain cost associated with that. So now I can apply a resource tag to different experiments. That's gonna be useful if, as an enterprise, I wanna track the cost of the different experiments I'm running, so I can now tag the experiments with different values, and then when I look at my billing, I can see, okay, well, these experiments tagged with this tag, this cost me X. These experiments tagged with different resource tag value, these cost me Y, and that might help maybe charge back or just show back. And then intra dynamic groups and administrative units now support up to 15,000, up from 5,000, so a, a 3X increase. And the root management group, if you have not already enabled it, is gonna roll out to all tenants starting, I think, from May 3rd today. The root management group, as the name suggests, it's at the top of the hierarchy, directly underneath your entry tenant, and under which I would create my other management groups if I'm using them, to which a subscription would belong. And that's really useful because remember I can apply policy at management groups, I can apply role-based access control at management groups, and even budgets. So this improves my overall governance experience and it doesn't change anything if I'm not using them today. I don't have to do anything, but it's just gonna be available for all tenants. And then you could go and create your own management groups and organize your subscriptions under them when you're ready. And that was it. As always, I hope that was useful. Until the next update, take care.